Dear Fayyar Clark, Labour MP, thanks for joining us today. It's great to join you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. So, um, over the past months, Turkey's attack against the HDP have continued to escalate. Only recently, on the 26th of April, the trial of 108 HDP members, including the former co-chairs of the party, has begun. Uh, what do you think these attacks and this trial particular indicate about the state of democracy and the rule of law in Turkey? Um, thank, uh, thank you for that question, Erem. It is um, the, the, the current um, attack on uh, HDP representatives, whether it's members of parliament, whether it's local uh, elected uh, leaders of municipalities or councillors or even members, um, is incredibly worrying and it's been ongoing um i would say since you know since the 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 last election when akp um didn't get a didn't get the majority they were hoping basically they were denied the majority um by hdp becoming um successful and winning seats um so so to to me what comes across is as a government um who is that that is angry that did that that you know that people did they, they people didn't vote for them and had uh, hdp won elections and it's the same with they're doing the same with the local elections where lots of hdp mayors were elected um the worrying thing is in turkey you have there there, there is a system now where it's you know it's it's one man one religion one party state and with complete and absolute impunity, um, and they behave as they wish, and they have, a, you know, the judiciary, the, the politics, the parliament doesn't seem to work, and only the, you know, what one man seems to, uh, to says seems to go. So it is incredibly worrying. Um, but as you said, over the past month, um, the the attacks on HDP have intensified. Um, and now we've got the, the trials that started today. Um, so it is, it's, I, I, I am concerned. Um, I have, um, I've raised this with, with the British government here, with the foreign secretary on numerous occasions. Um, and, 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 and calling on the British government to actually, uh, to raise con their concerns and to call Turkey out on these undemocratic um, processes. Um, the unlawful processes as well. Why in your view uh, have the governments of Western countries, including the UK, failed to take action against the invasion and human rights violations committed by the Turkish government? Um, you're right, Erem. You know, um, we have, um, myself and many other cross-party MPs, I would say, and not just Labour MPs, but MPs from across different political parties have raised the issue with um, the lack of plurality of, of a Turkish democracy and the, and the oppression that the, the, the opposition MPs are suffering in Turkey. Um, but the, uh, our government, sadly, the, the current government, uh, in response to everything that I have raised in Parliament and that my colleagues have raised. Um, I only, you know, only last month in March, I held a debate in Parliament um, to discuss um, the, the, the attack on opposition MPs in, in Turkey, um, and which was joined by, you know, I was joined by many other MPs and the, and the government minister. So we were able to question the government minister. And the reason, what the reason they give um, and every time you ask them a question about Turkey, the one thing they constantly repeat is the fact that Turkey is a um, ally of, of Britain and it's a NATO member. Um, but they seem to prioritize the trade deal that they were going to sign, which they have signed with Turkey now. Um, and the West constantly keep talking about the fact that Turkey is housing uh, millions of um, refugees um, and asylum seekers from from Syria. So they are almost sadly willing to turn a blind eye to what is happening in Turkey to the people of Turkey as long as 
Turkey can be, act as a gatekeeper for the for the for the immigrants for the asylum seekers in Turkey. So it's the fear that Turkey will and Turkey does use it. Turkey doesn't you know Turkey's not uh, shy about using the 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 refugees that it hosts in Turkey. Turkey uses it, and Turkey is more than you know. It threatens the the West with you know with opening the the, the gates to allow asylum seekers into Europe. So the and the issue is that they are the West is not willing. The West is willing to turn a blind eye to what Turkey is doing um, because they are they 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 don't want Turkey to open their gates. Um, to refugees, and also they are thinking about for Britain. It was the trade deal, um, and they keep repeating that. It is shameful. It is absolutely shameful that the Western governments, who st you know stand up day in day out, talk about freedoms, talk about human rights, um, but yet are willing to turn a blind eye to the human rights and the freedoms of elected politicians and the people of Turkey. Thank you. So last three days there has been military operations to Kurdish regions started just before the HDP trial and the same day with the Armenia genocide uh, anniversary uh, by the Turkish state. What do you think is the aim of the Turkish government's uh, domestic and foreign policies in the region? And what do you think people in the Western countries can do to pressure the uh, Turkish government and support the people of the region who are under attack? Yes, I mean, it is, when you look at what's happening in Turkey, you would think that um, a, a good government will concentrate on uh, trying to resolve its domestic uh, problems, um, whether it's COVID, whether it's and the fact that the the the, the Turkish economy is tanking, um, whether it's you know the, the, with the with the with the lira devaluing at such a fast rate, you think those were the issues? You know the unemployment. They will be concentrating on the domestic issues, um, but Turkey are you know are quite happy just to leave you know to ignore those and try to distract its population, its nation, um, by uh, by having some some you know divisive issues by by bringing divisive issues um, to to the fore. Um, Turkey has, you know, they, every, every time Turkey, they, you know, they, the government or the, the state is having a difficult time domestically, they seem to think it's a way to get out of those issues is to go abroad and attack the Kurds um, or, or, or just over the border. Um, it is it is it's disappointing that um, that, you know, that, that, that not many, you know, we haven't heard anything from the Western countries because the last thing. The last thing that they, you know, the, the, the Iraqi, the, the Kurdish regional government, the Kurdish region in Iraq or Syria needs is more attacks. The people of that area, the, the last thing they need is more war, more bombs. Um, so, the, the, you know, it, we should be, Western countries should be calling Turkey on this. They should be calling on Turkey to stop, to halt all its attacks. Um, but what Turkey doesn't understand is, it doesn't matter by by going over bombing Kurds in Syria or in, or in Iraq that it's going to get rid of this Kurdish problem in Turkey. It's just not. It's just not going to happen. That is not a solution. Turkey needs to sit down. Turkey needs. Turkey has a Kurdish problem, and it doesn't matter how many political parties it bans. It doesn't matter how many of politicians it imprisons. The, the, the millions of Kurds there exist and they're not going to go away by Turkey just trying to divert um, the attention to another area by bombing it. It's just not going to happen. And the sooner the Western countries, sooner the, you know, the so-called friends of Turkey remind Turkey of this and constantly tell Turkey about this, the better. Because it's not going to do the Turkish people who are suffering from unemployment, who are suffering from devaluing of lira, who are suffering because of the massive increases of, of COVID. The sooner that the government responds to those issues, the better, because that's what a government, good government needs to do. Dear Faria Clark, Labour Party Member of Parliament, thanks for joining us. Thank you for your comments today. 
Thank you for having me, Aram, and have a very good night. Thank you.